Hi, this is Megan of Megan's Creations. And today I'm going to show you some fun things you can do with text in Photoshop. And you see here I just have happy birthday written out. And one of my favorite things to do is to change up the spacing. So I use this character palette here. And you can see I've already changed it up because this font is uh, set to 48, but I changed up the distance between the two lines by um, selecting here. If you go auto, it will just stick to the distance, automatic di distance for that point size. Or you can choose a custom one. You could space them out further or squeeze them in closer. Now that would be way too close to do. But, um, you know, and always, as always, you can type in something original um, for yourself there. And um, another thing I use it for is, let's say I'm making some word art and I would really like this happy birthday to be about the same width. So I could go to birthday and try to maybe squeeze it tighter and that's what this option does here. It changes the distance between the letters. So maybe like a negative 75 and that squeezes it in pretty good. And say, well, it's a little too close. I don't like my R running into my T there. So if you want to just go with like 50 or 25, so it's like that's as tight as we can squeeze this because of the R and the T. We don't want them to smash into each other too much. So then we can go, okay, well, let's make the happy spaced out more. So then you go into the positives to do that. Um, and again, you can type in a custom width or um, if you need to. And so, yeah, we space that out and, you know, maybe we like that better that it's it looks even now. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing you can do with the character palette is ordinal numbers really nicely. Um, so here, let's say I have fourth and I want this TH to be raised like we usually write them when we write the ordinal numbers. So the first thing we want to do is reduce the size so I'm going to go with about a 30 and then let's also since we probably want these close together we'll do zero now what we go to um, is we select the T and the H and there's this option right here you see the little arrow with the A raised and that's going to push this up so you can play around with it 20 or let's say maybe like 15 and uh, that'll do it that'll raise it up to um, put that ordinal number up there like that. So that's another fun thing for that to do. Um, I also like to use text warping. That's this option right here. Create a text warp. I often use arc. Um, and I increase it down at 50 is the standard there for the um, default setting. And so you can play around with this. If you go to the negative, it'll bend it down. And um, there's lots of fun things here. You know, flag or uh, fisheye, fun little bulge. So things like that. Um, those are really fun to play with too. And the, also, you know that you can always transform it and um, negative 90 will turn it to the left. <clears throat> so you can make it um, vertical like that. Or if you decide to go positive 90, you'll take it to the right. And you can turn your, your text on the side like that. Um, another fun tool is right under here under the text they have this vertical type tool so what that does is instead of you having to if you were trying to do it on your own you'd type a letter hit return type a letter hit return to do the different um, levels but here you would just do you just type it like you would normally and it'll make it vertical for you so that's some some fun things too with the text um, uh, again, um, I would also recommend that when you are journaling, make a text box. Don't just click and start typing text because I found that I decide that, oh no, I've, I've typed too much. I need to make it smaller and then I have to reformat all my lines. Um, or, you know, I don't have enough text to fill it up so it looks kind of bare and so I'm making the font bigger and, and again, I'm having to readjust those lines manually and that's, that's a pain. If you use a text box, and the way I created this text box was I just, with the text tool, I clicked and I held down the button as I dragged the box. And don't worry about if you make the box too big, too small. It's so easy to adjust it. So, we journal, sorry, we, we journal here. 
in the text box and then um, we can easily adjust things. I didn't notice that it's spacing it out really big and that's because of this character palette that we haven't fixed that. And it's also a raising it also zero. That's why it was outside the box. Um, auto, you know, you want to try to go back and fix these things. <laughs> there we go. So um, we can oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> so um, we type this and using the text tool, click it into the journal box. You can just go to the edges and use the arrow and you can make things skinnier or make them wider. And you see that it's not changing the size of my text. It's just changing the size of my text box and it's automatically readjusting those lines for me. So, so amazing. So wonderful. And then, you know, you can always select it and make the font bigger if you need to. And, and then you can adjust your text box to show all that font. So use a text box when you're going to do a lot of journaling, like a paragraph or something. Okay, um, something else I was going to show you was, uh, I was going to say, um, if you're going to clip a paper to, and I'm just going to pretend like this color layer is a paper, to your font, to your text layer, um, keep in mind that if you've done something to your text layer, like a stroke, you see that it's not going to clip that color to your stroke. So if you want to texture your, your stroke, you're going to need to put it on its own layer. So you right click on the stroke and you go create layer. And now the stroke is on its own layer. And I do that a lot because I, I do want my stroke to have texture. And then I, you know, add a drop shadow to that. And it's, if you try to drop shadow with the stroke in the same layer, that's, it, it's hard to see it. <laughs> it's hard for the drop shadow to show up behind the stroke. So it's good to put the stroke on its own layer. Okay. Um, another fun thing is if I wanted to color in these letters. So I use the magic tool and I click on it and then I'm going to make a new layer underneath it. Go to select, modify, expand by two and um, yeah, just one or two pixels. You don't want to do a lot. And then you can bucket fill it and that'll be fun like that. Just um, doing some different colors here. Um, again, you can't do this and I wouldn't do this to the text layer itself anyways. Anytime I'm doing you're doing a bucket fill, it needs to be on a, a separate layer. And um, Otherwise, you'll get jaggies. But, um, oops, there we go. Uh, that's also just also something fun you could do, a different thing to do with your text. So, you can go through and you know, do blue and purple on the birthday, and then that'd be a really fun little way to jazz up the text there. So, I hope you found something interesting with today's tutorial, something and also something new that you didn't know about text in Photoshop. It's really fun to play around with it. I love it and I, I love that, I don't know, I just I feel like with paper scrapbooking you're always so afraid you're, to start writing because you're just worried you're gonna mess it up. <laughs> but Photoshop there's so many fun ways to change up your handwriting and, and change up what you're journaling so that you don't have to be afraid. So um, I hope you enjoy this tutorial and we'll see you next week.